Josh is going to come up on stage. We're going to hear a great message. So in turn to the person next to you, give him a high five. Tell him you love him. Turn to the person on your other side. Give him a high five. Tell him you love him. All right, guys. Sit back and enjoy this message. Oh, man. I'd seen it happen once. I'd seen it happen once at Big Stuff where the party literally didn't happen because it just took so long. And I thought I was going to have to be a bearer of really bad news and say, we can't keep doing this, guys. This is too much. But it happened. Uh, make some noise if you like go to Oakville. Oakville High School. Okay. Make some noise if you go to Melville. Melville. Anybody? No, I want you to be loud. I want you to be loud. Okay, so if I make some like you're proud of it. Real quick, real quick, Stephen. Yeah, dude, Stephen. Amazing. Love that guy. Um, how about Sekman? Sekman in the room? Okay. Fox? Anybody go to Fox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the turtle with you? Oh, man. I was going to give him a shout out. You would have never thought I would have done that. <laughs> uh, if you go to Summit, make some noise. Summit. Yes. Yeah. Um, if, you go to, uh, if you go to Westminster, you're going to go to Westminster, make some noise. Westminster. Yeah. Ah! There's a couple of you. Um, if you go to Festus, make some noise. Sekman. Fox? No, I'm kidding. Um, Hillsboro? Hillsboro? Dirty Borough? Windsor? Windsor? Okay. We got a lot of you, real quick. Okay, that's pretty cool. Shh, 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 shh. All right, be quiet. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There, uh, there are a lot of you. I'm going to move this over so it's not blocking my cool shoes. Um, but anyways, um, thank you guys so much. I feel good about them. Uh, but... But that's pretty cool. There are a lot of schools represented. This is a fun night. I'm excited. The energy, the energy in here is a blast. But I'm also still grieving. Um, I'm grieving and I'm hurting and um, I'm in pain and I'm processing the fact that me and my fellow soldiers uh, didn't win the Big Stuff basketball tournament. And, and so I'm still, I'm still processing it. I'm still working through it uh, in my in my mind, and, and, and our volleyball team won. If you're on the volleyball team, can you stand up? Can you stand up? Yeah, yeah. Stay, real quick, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing, look me in the eye. Okay, look me in the eye. I'm sorry. Uh, I really am sorry. You guys did your part. Um, we wanted both teams to win, and you held up your end of the bargain, and uh, I want to apologize uh, to you. So you guys can sit back down. Um, and, and, and honestly, it's on me. It's on me. I played bad. I, I took some silly shots. I missed some easy shots. I went away from the game plan. It's, uh, it's on me. And, and honestly, not, I'm going to tell you guys because none of you guys came and supported and watched. So I'm just going to kind of explain. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of explain what, what happened. So I feel pretty good about the way that I acted. Like, I feel fairly good about the way that I acted, although I did find myself talking trash to high school kids, and I'm a 27-year-old pastor, and I did, I did find myself wanting to punch the opposing youth pastor square in the face like two or three times. And he was the guy who had the long hair and lost in the dance competition, which I was super excited about. The girls won. And, and, and the reason that I was frustrated, I think if we would have let him get away with it, they would have cheated us multiple times. So I had to get kind of angry and say, that's cheating. You can't do that. And after all of that emotional toll that was expended from myself, we lost. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're thinking, Josh, just have fun. It's just a game. Like, just go out, enjoy it. I'm sorry. At this point in my Big Stuff basketball career, the only reason I try and play in the Big Stuff basketball tournament is to win it, okay? Like, that's the, that's the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, real quick. That's, that's the purpose, okay? That is, that is the purpose. I have a crystal clear vision. I want to win. And I know some of you are thinking, Josh, that's immature. You're too old for this. You're playing against high school kids. And you would have a point on all three fronts. But what I want, what, what, what I want to make very clear to you is, is that I think even you, if you're a board game player, even those people that say they aren't competitive, you want to win. Like the purpose is winning. And when you win, a side effect of that is having fun, right? Like it's fun, it's fun to win. But there's also a group of you in here, 
And you're honest when you say, when I play games, when I play sports, I just go with the flow. I kind of see what happens. Whatever happens, happens. It's great. I just, I just play to have fun. And more power to you. You probably act more like Jesus than I do when I'm playing sports. I think all of that is awesome. I don't want you on my team, but that's great, okay? Like, I think, I think that's really awesome. But I want to make it really, really clear. You can't approach life that way. Like, like you can't approach life that way. Let's just see how life comes to me. This middle school year, we're just gonna kind of go with the flow. No plan, no purpose. We'll just let life come to me. Let's just have fun and see what happens. That's not how you can approach your high school year. That's not how you can approach the rest of your summer. And I know that we probably wouldn't say this word for word, but a lot of us live like that. We live purposeless at times. Without intentionality, we wake up and whatever happens, happens. If I play video games for 12 hours, I play video games for 12 hours. If I hang out with friends, I, there, there's just not much purpose. And Paul tells us that maybe this isn't the way that we're called to live our lives. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 and 26. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. Think about that. Think about athletes. Think about how goofy me talking about winning a big stuff basketball tournament is. That basketball that we would have won, okay, would have been sitting up in that shelf right when we came back and no one would ever see it again. No one would ever think about it, but yet we train for it. We get excited about it, sports, different things, and all that's great. I'm not saying that's bad, but Paul is saying we do it to, to gain an eternal prize. As Jesus followers, we should train to get a prize that will last forever. And he says, so in mind, so with that in mind, I, I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. And what I want to make clear tonight is, is that for the rest of your summer, for your middle school year, for your seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, college year, where, wherever you're at, there is purpose. And a lot of us, I'm just going to get real here for just a minute. And, and, and for a lot of us, the reason that we're already over high school and our high school, our high school year hasn't even started yet is that maybe you've lost sight of the purpose. Maybe if you're in a middle school and you're like, I just can't wait to get to high school. Maybe you've just lost sight of what this whole thing is about. Maybe the reason that you just can't wait for this next season of your life, you know, you just can't wait until you're not single anymore is because you've lost sight of the purpose of the season of life that you're in. Maybe the reason that there are studies out that talk about how millennials and, and kind of people my age and younger, and I can relate to this at times, is we just want to jump ship. We want to move. We want to go somewhere else. We want to, we want to leave and travel and we, we don't really hold jobs for super long. We move on to the next job. We want to get out of the city that we live in and all that. And there are some good reasons for that. But a lot of it is, is we just lose sight of the grand scheme of things. We, we begin to think that high school is just about, you know, again, just like getting good enough grades to get into college. And while that's part of it, parents relax, that's part of it. Okay. That is not the purpose. While you think high school is just about making friends and making memories and gaining popularity and getting a good reputation, and while all of that might be part of it, that is not the purpose. You think you've got to achieve things in, in the classroom or on the sports fields where you can get a scholarship and all that. That's great. That's part of it. But that is not the purpose. The, our job, I think a lot of times we think it's just to make money. And while that's obviously part of it, that is not, that's not the purpose. And so what is? the purpose? What, what is it? And so I've done my best this week to kind of just like glance over. I'm not going to act like I read through all the gospel accounts because I didn't, but I kind of skimmed the words of Jesus. I reflected on the entire message kind of, of, of the Bible, of the good news of Jesus. And also like just in my personal life, like what, what is my purpose? Or at least what should my purpose be? What should the seventh graders purpose be for the rest of the summer in their middle school and their middle school career? What should, what should the high schoolers' purpose be? College, college students' purpose, adult in the room. What, what should our purpose be? And I think it's twofold, and I think it's pretty simple. It's to know Jesus and to make him known. It's to know Jesus and to make him known. Beyond making money this summer to where when you go away to college, you aren't like stupid broke. Like, 
beyond like, you know, making memories and soaking it up and going on vacation to where when you go to school year, you can talk about how awesome your summer was. That might be great, but that's, that's not the purpose of the rest of your summer. Your purpose is to know Jesus and to make him known. And I see it very, very clearly in, in a chapter of the Bible in John chapter 14. This is kind of where I was directed and John 14. And in the chapter beforehand, Jesus is speaking with his friends and his disciples and he, and he drops a bomb, a bomb on him. And he's like, I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave you. I'm about to send you out to love people like nobody else has loved you. I'm about to send you out to share the greatest message of all time that's gonna be a foreign concept to the whole world and it's gonna turn our world upside down. You're gonna be the ones entrusted to share that. I'm gonna send you out to do that and I'm not gonna be there. And so these people have to be thinking, what? Jesus, what? No, we need you. We're just a bit small band of rebels. How are we going to do this? And then he drops another bomb on him. And he says, some of you guys are going to deny me, actually. In my darkest hour, some of you guys are going to deny me. And so these, imagine if you're Jesus' friends here, you'd be horrified. You'd be terrified. We can't do this without you. And then beyond that, I don't want to deny my best friend. I don't want to deny the greatest person who's ever lived. And I know that it's a different cultural context, obviously. I know that there are different events that are transpiring 2,000 years ago, but I think maybe a lot of us feel a similar way. We still live in a broken world. The mission is still very, very important, and we're still just human beings. And we think, how in the world are you going to speak to me as a middle schooler and a high schooler telling me I need to go in and to make Jesus known in my school? How can I actually carry that out? That seems difficult, that seems challenging. And then some of you, I actually had personal conversations with some of you down at Big Stuff and your fear was the same fear that disciples had 2000 years ago. You're scared that when school starts up, you're gonna deny Jesus in front of your friends. I had personal conversations. I just don't know if this Big Stuff thing is gonna last. I don't know if this whole love for Jesus thing is gonna last. And so maybe what Jesus said 2000 years ago to his friends, he would say the exact same thing to you tonight. And so this is where we pick up in John chapter 14. He says this, do not let your hearts be troubled. When trouble comes, which it will, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And so he's speaking about heaven, our future home. And he says, and if I go there and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know, you know the way to the place where I am going. And so his disciples at this point are kind of sitting there listening and they're just like, yep, I know what you're talking about. I get it. I know the place where you're going and where I'm going to go. And deep down, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Thomas stands up and he's like the real one and he's the honest one and he stands up and he's like, actually, um, we, we, we don't know where you're going and uh, how can we know the way? And the disciples are like, yeah, that's what we were thinking actually too. We don't, we don't really know what, what, you're, what you're talking about. And, and this is kind of a side note, but if you're struggling with stuff, if you're wrestling with stuff, vocalize it because God has a way of not only encouraging you, but he has a way of encouraging the people around you. He has a way of using even the things that you're struggling with to make a difference in the world. Think about this. If Thomas didn't speak up and just voice his, his struggle with this, ima imagine we might not have this next verse, which is probably one of the most popular verses in all of Christianity. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. This is so clear and it's clear even throughout the narrative of John chapter 15, the next chapter. He says, as I send you out, the mission is clear. The message is important. The most important message of all time. As you go into a broken world, you need to know me. You need to trust me. You need to believe in me. And I think a lot of times when we hear the word believe and, and belief and all that, we think it's just like a one-time decision we make at night three at Big Stuff. to where we can go to heaven. And I think that's obviously part of it. But... Theologians believe that Jesus isn't just saying believe one time. He's saying believe in me and then believe in me again. Trust in me and then trust in me again. I mean, know me, stay connected to me, know me. And there's a massive difference between knowing about Jesus and truly knowing Jesus. 
Like student, it would be pretty easy for you to know about Jesus. Get on Google tonight, watch, the, watch, watch what you search, but, but you, could, you could learn about Jesus, open up the Bible for 30 minutes. You could know about Jesus, come to the edge every now and then, whenever you feel like it, you could know about Jesus. But if you really wanna know Jesus, if you wanna be close to him, this takes work, this takes purpose, this takes discipline. And Jesus says, your purpose is to know me to know me, and then he goes on to say this. This is the second part of our purpose. He says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And so we're gonna do about 30 seconds of work to where we can better understand this. Essentially the work that Jesus came to do through the works that he came to do was to make an announcement. Like the turning water into wine, how many of you guys have heard that story, okay? It, it, was, a, it was a cool story, it, the party was back, it brought joy to a lot of people, but it was about more than just turning water into wine. The feeding, the masses, it was more, about just, it was more than just the feedings. The, the healings, it was, it was about more than just the healings. The casting out demons, it was about more than just casting out demons. The raising from the dead, it was about more than just that. This is an announcement that Jesus is making to the world. This is what God looks like. He's gracious, he's kind, he's loving, he's the healer, he's extraordinary, he brings life, he raises people from the dead spiritually. In fact, he is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus is saying that when we know him, when we're connected to him, when we believe in him, we join in on the greatest mission of all time to do the works that he has been doing. We are now the ones who make the announcement to the world, this is what God looks like. This is what Jesus looks like. Our purpose is to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. And the question is, are we gonna live for it? Is that gonna be at the forefront of our lives? And I know what some of you are thinking, Josh, this is elementary. We just heard this at Big Stuff. This is elementary. We hear this at the edge, like this is elementary. And what I wanna to say to you, middle schooler, high schooler, leader, adult in the room, is it though? Is it? Do we wake up last year, every day before school and say, I'm gonna know Jesus, I'm gonna love him more, I'm gonna make him known? Was that our main purpose last year at school? Has that been our purpose? This summer, this is our purpose, to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. But what I love about this passage is he doesn't just speak into our purpose, but he speaks about something else. It two different ways, and I wanna, I wanna, say, I wanna say this. I think this is, this is super important for us to, to gather, and, and, and here's essentially what Jesus is saying. It was before my junior year of high school, and I was about to play it was about to be our junior year basketball season, and, uh, and our coach had us write down goals, individual goals, team goals, and almost all of us wrote down for our team goal that we wanted to go to the Final Four. We wanted to make it to state. And, that we were there, and the funny thing is, is, looking back, is I don't think any of us actually believed that it could happen going into junior year. Like, we weren't close the year before. Uh, it never happened at Oakville, Melville School District. We're like, there's no, there's no way. And then all of a sudden, we found ourselves in the Elite Eight game. We needed to win one more game to make it down to the Final Four. We're playing against Hazelwood Central, one of the best teams in the state. Deep down, I'm thinking, I don't know if we can beat this team. And then all of a sudden, I think we could finally breathe when there was about one minute left in the game when we were up 20 points. We were like, we're actually going to make it to the Final Four. And then we don't need to talk about the next two games. We got whooped in the Final Four. And I scored a little bit, so I went to a press conference afterwards with like local news stations and newspapers. And ESPN was there. It was like, a massive deal. I'm kidding. There was like no one there. But, but, but I remember they were asking me questions and I was sitting on this table and, and, and I, all my answers were terrible, like terrible. And it was like surface level. I was so nervous. I rubbed my ear like the whole time. It was a nervous tick. They'd ask me a question and immediately I'd be like, um, uh, like, I don't know. And it's a cringy video. You could probably find it on YouTube. It's terrible. And, and, and I remember there's one answer that I actually liked that I gave, okay? And, and it was actually like what I was thinking. And it was the last question they asked. And they said, what does this season, what does this season mean for you guys moving forward? And I said, it means everything. Before this season, we didn't think that this could actually happen. I said, now we know it can happen. Like, we should be back here next year. And so the next year, it made all the difference. We kind of walked with swag, and, and we played confident. It didn't matter who we played. We knew that we could beat them. It changed everything. There wasn't just a purpose to make it to the Final Four, but we knew there was actually potential for it to happen. And that changed everything. How many of you guys have ever asked a girl out on a date? 
Raise your hand, seriously, come on, be bold. Raise it up high, raise it up high. Okay, yeah, awesome. Uh, all right, yeah, cool. Uh, while we're at it, who's single? No, I'm just kidding, don't do that. But, but I remember I've had some conversations with high school students, college students, friends over the years, and I've gotten to know some students and I, I've, I've like, you know, had conversations like, you know, do you like anyone? you have a crush on anyone? And a lot of times the guys are honest with me and they're like, yeah, yeah, I like this girl, I like this girl. And normally the question I'll eventually ask if they're like not super uncomfortable, and I'll be like, are you gonna ask them out? Are you gonna pursue it at all? And it's funny how many times like, these guys, and this is how I was, like when I was single in high school, which was rare. But when I was, like, I remember if I would like a girl, I would be, I would, I would be nervous. I would, this is a great time for the piano to come in, by the way, too. Like, this is so good. Um, I remember I'd be, I'd be nervous. And, and, and so when I asked the question of these guys, a lot of times the answer is like, I like them, but no, I'm not asking them out. And the reason is, if you dig a little bit, most of the time is they're like, I don't know if they like me. I don't know if this could actually happen. They're kind of out of my league. I don't know. And so what do we do as guys? We're super brave. We're super bold. And we ask them anyways. No, most of the time we don't. We actually go up to like one of their friends. We're like, hey, can you find out? Can you find out if maybe she likes me a little bit? Has anybody ever done this? Just don't raise your hand. But, but, you know, like, and then we receive word back. We receive word back that, that they like us or whatever. And then, and then generally as dudes, we're like, hey girl, <laughs> ah! right? Like you trying to go on a date, like my parents will pick you up, right? Like we get, we, we get all excited. It changes everything because now there's not just a purpose, but there's a little bit of potential. And I love this. Jesus has just given us a crystal clear purpose. Know Jesus, make Jesus known, but he knows he can't just stop there because this is over our heads. At least it seems like it's over our heads. This is intimidating. This is big. And so Jesus doesn't just let us know that there's purpose, but he lets us know that there is potential. This could actually be carried out. He goes on to say in John 14, 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And then he goes on to say this, they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. These disciples are terrified, they're scared, they're horrified. They're like, there's absolutely no way. And Jesus looks them in the eye and he says, you're gonna do it. You're gonna change the world. You're gonna do the greatest work of all time. You're gonna love people. You're gonna live different. You're gonna share the greatest message of all time and you're gonna change the world. And I think he would say the same thing to you. You feel like it's over your head. You feel like it's difficult. There's no way I'm gonna do this. I don't even know if I care about this. And I think Jesus would say, no, no, no. If you know me, if you stay connected to me, if you love me, you're gonna do it. At Sekman, you're gonna do it. At Fox, you're gonna do it. At Oakville, you're gonna do it. At Melville, you're gonna do it. At Windsor, you're gonna do it. At Festus, at Hillsboro, you name it. Sorry if I missed your school, but you're going to change the world around you. This is going to happen. There's not just power, but there is potential. And this changes everything. And then Jesus goes on to say this, kind of a little curveball here tonight. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay, Jesus, you just said that we were gonna do extraordinary things. You just said that, 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 that we were gonna do even greater things than you do, which means we're gonna have more influence at times than you did while you were walking on the earth. Like, and now you're saying, apart from me, you can do nothing. And yeah, Jesus is wanting to let us know tonight that for our school year coming up, for the rest of this summer, sure, there, there's a purpose, there's potential, but there's also power. There's also power. He wants to let us know that there is absolutely no potential to carry out anything eternally significant on our own. And so he goes on to say this in John 14, verse 18. He says, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. A few verses later. It could be read like you're gonna do all these amazing things because I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And then he says the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Essentially what his announcement is, it's a mysterious announcement. And you can like get excited when I give it, you know, like you can like look at me like I have three heads, right? Like, 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 like he, he, <laughs> he gives this extraordinary announcement. It's, it's, a, it's a mysterious announcement. 
It's a wild announcement. It's something that they probably couldn't comprehend in the moment. It's something that I still have a hard time comprehending at times as a Jesus follower. And essentially what he's saying is the same power that turned that water into wine, the same, the same power that fed the multitudes, just a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish, the same power that healed literally hundreds of people, the same power that casted out demons, the same power that rose people from the dead, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead will come and abide in you. And now I love what Paul says. He literally says, he says, he says, he says the same power, word for word, that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. And now, 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 as a middle school student, think about that. As a high school student, as a college leader going away to school, as, as an adult who's going into a workplace tomorrow, think about that. What? The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is alive in me. There's purpose, there's potential, and there's power. The question is, are we going to tap into it? Are we gonna, are we gonna tap into it at all. And I know, again, like, this is, this is a challenging, this is a challenging idea. Make Jesus known, what? Like, love people like nobody else has loved them. Speak to people like nobody else has spoken to them. Change the world around me. Yeah, I, I, I get it. And, and, and how many of you guys, real quick, have seen The Lion King, okay? You've, like the old Lion King, raise your hand. Okay, how many of you guys have seen the new Lion King? Okay, was it good? No? You guys are crazy. Everyone I've talked to says it's amazing. It's awful? Really? Do you guys agree? Do you think it was awful? Wow, man, what a downer. What a downer. Um, I've heard it was really good. But anyways, um, well, I love like at one point in the story, there's Simba, okay? Simba, and I think it's Nala, who's his girlfriend, right? Okay. And, and they're, they're, they're in like a pretty sticky situation and they find themselves in front of the hyenas and the hyenas are kind of taunting them. And, and, and they're a little bit scared and they're a little bit in over their head and they're just kind of there on their own. And then all of a sudden Simba tries giving out this roar to kind of scare the hyenas away and he's like, Rawr! and that's actually how it sounds. That was actually pretty good. Like, and, and he's like, Rawr, Rawr, Rawr! and he does it like three different times. And, and, and then he tries it one more time. He tries it one more time to let out this roar. And then all of a sudden, first time ever watching it, you're like, wow, it's a miracle. Like, like literally, like th this roar was extraordinarily loud and it was bouncing off of the rocks and it was echoing like crazy. And, and the hyenas get horrified and they're scared. And they're like, what is taking place? And what took place is that Simba wasn't alone. Sure, Simba was in over his head. I'm just gonna be honest, you'll be in situations where you're in over your head this year. It's gonna be challenging, there's gonna be temptations, there's gonna be trials, you're a broken human being, it's gonna be difficult, but you're not alone. We need to do our best to stay connected to our God to where when we roar back against darkness and temptation and trials and the temptations to throw in the towel, to give up, to say, I'll just wait till big stuff next year. We need to be close enough to God to where when we roar back, it's not our roar, it's His. It's his, and our God is so powerful that if we can just stay connected to him, stay connected to his power, he is so powerful. He will allow us to step into our schools. The darkness will tremble. Satan will fall to his knees and the world will be changed. There's purpose. Are you gonna live for it? There's potential. Are you gonna believe it? There's power. Are you gonna tap into it? It's your call. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And we're grateful for, for the story and for the fact that you're good and for the passage of scripture that we studied where Jesus can not only encourage us, but, but challenge us to step up, to be the students, to be the people that you have called us to be. Father, we're about to take a break for three weeks. Lord, I pray that we can make it our, our, our aim, our mission, our purpose to know you to stay connected to you, to love you, to trust you more. And Father, we know that as a result of that, as a result of staying connected to the vine, we will bear much 
fruit. We will make you known to a world that desperately needs to know you. Father, I pray that that takes place and God help us believe that it's actually attainable. Help us believe that there's potential to carry out this purpose that you've given us because there is power. You are powerful and the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is alive in us. What a mystery. What a beautiful truth. No matter how old, no matter how young in this room, that's our reality if we simply believe. We love you. We're grateful for this story. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Everybody said, amen.